And this... Oh, this makes me so angry. So I recently asked you guys what questions or topics you would like me to cover on this channel uh, because I want to start doing more uncut or not so heavily edited videos in between the high production stuff because man, I'm going to go broke real quick if I do it. Because I'm re um, like right now I'm working on, yeah, a pretty big one. It took me like two months just to write this script and almost a year to even understand what I'm talking about. I am looking forward to it, but it's probably going to be a while until I, <laughs> I make a video like that again. It's very existential philosophy based, which I'm sure some of you guys are really looking forward to and pff, it's gonna blow your minds. But anyways, we've got an interesting question by gods. This isn't really a question, but I would like your opinion. You see, I'm 15, me and a friend have tripped for the past 5 weeks straight for a total of 650 micrograms LSD consumed. I've noticed upon arriving back to school, my mind is at a completely different caliber than everyone else and I know it's because of my trips. I've also come to the realization that nothing matters, so in that I don't matter as well. Family, friends and even life itself have become so minimal to me. I'm afraid I've reached a level of awareness far too early. I'm starting to remember very traumatic events and even nightmares from my past vividly. Did I fuck up my brain? Okay, first of all, no, you didn't fuck up your brain. You're just going to have to go through some pretty heavy integration for a while. And I think this is exactly why Carl Jung used to say, beware of unearned wisdom. And I know I quote this a lot, but it's a very relevant quote which I wish I knew about <laughs> before my last trip. But damn, that's a lot of LSD, dude. This can be a very important example for people listening at home to maybe not trip when you're so young because it's, it's unnecessary. And like you say, like when you go back to school because you've had these mind-blowing trips and you understand reality on a different level, I wouldn't say you understand it better, right? Because it just depends on your, the foundations of your mind. As an example, let's say if you're highly delusional, then having an LSD trip is just gonna make you more delusional, but you're gonna think that you're tapped into something legit. This is why building your foundation before going into tripping is so important, right? Like reading about Jungian psychology, some existential philosophy, uh, normal psychology, and, and, and things like spirituality, maybe go into Buddhism, listen to some Watts, Taoism, you know, whatever resonates with you, but it's really important to learn about the nature of the ego, and reality as much as you can. When you go into a psychedelic trip too early, especially because you want to like speed up your spiritual progress or whatever, as tempting as it may be, going into it too early would sort of be like getting thrown in the deep end without knowing how to swim. Your ego is going to grab on whatever it can, right? And potentially attach incorrect meaning to the experience. But because psychedelics hijack your nervous system, the experience is really real and I'm not saying that whatever you experience is not real because I know it can feel very real but the interpretation of those experiences can be extremely delusional, right? Because you've just said you've come to the realization that nothing matters so I don't matter as well. See, that couldn't be further from the truth actually <laughs> because yeah, things do matter. I think that's it's a certain stage I feel like that a lot of people get with spirituality and I'm, I'm talking from experience here, right? I've gone through the phase of being a pessimistic nihilist and nothing matters and all that kind of stuff. But it's, um, it's a cheap trick, or well, I believe anyway, it's a cheap trick of the rational mind to justify not having responsibility in your life. I really do think that's it. And once you go to this meaningless realm, and you think, oh my God, that's it. It's like, no, 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 no. You got to keep going. <laughs> you got to keep going. But for your situation right now, and please don't take any of this advice as, as if I'm some sort of profession or anything. So I just want to give that disclaimer out there. Um, see, what happens when you have a heavy psychedelic trip, especially when you're so young, is that what it seems like from, from your question is that it opened the floodgates to massive levels of the shadow trying to integrate itself back to the whole, right? Because you're, you're even saying yourself, you're starting to remember very traumatic events and even nightmares from your past vividly. So as scary as your situation may be right now, it, it takes time. And I know that this may not be something that you want to hear, especially when you're 60 or 15. Jesus, 
you see, 15. <laughs> and usually at the age of 15, we're really impatient. And I can only speak from experience. I've been impatient my whole life up until my last psychedelic trip, which forced me to be patient, right? And kind of honor the stage that I'm at and enjoy the process. You will come out of this a lot stronger, assuming that you really take the integration phase seriously and you stay away from drugs. So first of all, I would stay away from all drugs, including alcohol and weed. Sometimes you just gotta wait for the paint to dry. So <laughs> sometimes throwing in another chemical into your body would be like painting over it. It's like, wait for it to dry, otherwise it might all mix up and make it even more difficult to integrate. And the only thing I can share from my horrific trip, which happened over 18 months ago, and I sort of had similar things, even though it, was, it wasn't just me remembering traumatic trips of my own, but it was very existential. And what helped me on my journey is really focusing on grounding yourself, right? And this isn't, and not just, you know, walking bare feet on the ground, but I mean like, make sure you're resting, you're eating healthy, you're, you're hanging out with good people and not just trippers who are like, yeah man, fucking LSD, yeah bro. Because I'm telling you, all the people that I knew back in high school who did psychedelics so early, didn't exactly have a happy ending at the end. I'm not saying this to try and scare you. I'm saying this to hopefully wake you up and not get into that realm too early because as you can tell, look what, look what happened, you know? And isolation is a real thing. And I think that's one of the dark sides of psychedelics is because you go so far out there, it makes it very difficult for you to relate with people. And then when it makes it more difficult to relate with other people, you feel more alone, you feel more isolated, right? And I'm reading this book at the moment. It's called The Real Causes of anxiety and depression and obviously it's a very long book with a lot of studies and stories and blah 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 but to simplify it it all comes down to disconnection and isolation that is literally the biggest cause of depression and anxiety that's why antidepressants don't work being alone doesn't necessarily mean that you're not around people because you can be around a whole bunch of people and still feel very alone okay this is about having a tribe now I know I'm going a little bit off track but I also think this is important to note there is a way to transcend this but most of it's time man um, yeah I wish I could tell you some magic pill that would just speed up the process uh, and what can speed up the process is actually talking to a therapist like I can leave a link below if you want some online counseling but that could really really help and like I'm not just saying this it's very important to talk this out with people, right? Especially about these traumas that are coming up because the psychedelics obviously opened you up to that realm and it's like, you're gonna deal with this shit whether you like it or not. So you're in this situation, so the best thing to do will, yeah, it's to listen. Listen to what's coming up. Why are these traumatic events coming up to the surface of your conscious mind? Why is that, you know? And you gotta really delve deep and I know it can be painful, but it's important to reconcile those traumas by understanding first of all putting the awareness on it and transcending it see family friends and even life itself have become so minimal to me i'm afraid i've reached a level of awareness far too early see it's ironic because when we're kids we're such in a rush to grow up and we don't want to enjoy where we're at this spiritual path may seem like fun and games in the beginning like oh my god so, so cool i get to raise my awareness and gain these super spiritual powers but if you're not ready for it so this is kind of what happens you end up being fractured and to defragment yourself and to integrate that shadow self into the whole you have to understand yourself and oh man i don't know man i don't know so I've come to realize that nothing matters, so that I don't matter. I could make an extremely long video going into why this reality does actually matter and that it's not all meaningless. That's just a misinterpretation of a scary trip. So and what I've come to realize is that not only is this life meaningful but and that it does matters, but in a lot of ways, this is the divine reality where everything kind of comes together, right? This is where things happen, literally. That's why we call it something, <laughs> not nothing. I think one of the reasons why people jump to this conclusion is to not deal with the harshness of reality, right? So you get to sweep suffering under the rug because, oh, it doesn't matter, right? It's all, it's all an illusion. One book that I'd highly recommend is called Man's Search for Meaning, right? Which is about a psychiatrist. I think it's a psychiatrist who's in Auschwitz, right? So he's in the Holocaust. His whole family got murdered. He saw horrific shit on a daily basis. And if that guy can find meaning at the end of that journey, we'll be all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it really is an inspirational story. 
and it's not just fluff and just bullshit it's actually rooted in very deep truths so first of all i'd really recommend reading books like that stay away from existential philosophy unless it's going to give you a positive spin on it so stay away from nihilism that's rubbish maybe delve deep into some jordan peterson i know he's a very controversial character but he knows his shit about psychology and about existential philosophy so maybe give his book a read 12 rules of life i can leave links in the description box below we can even get a free audible trial get one of these books free of charge you know and then cancel the trial if you don't want to continue it uh, but those are two books that I would really recommend. So 12 Rules for Life and Man's Search for Meaning. Uh, some Alan Watts is always good. Ram Das, he's a legend. Actually, you know what? I was going to give you all these other examples and books that you can read and people that you can follow, but then that will just overload your mind, which is probably not what you need right now. So yeah, maybe just stick with that <laughs> and rebuild the foundation of your mind from the ground up. And it's going to take a lot of time. It's probably going to be really painful, especially healing from this from these traumas that you've suffered from from your past and whatever that is i don't know i'd have to speak to you in in person to to really get to the bottom of what it is exactly because i'm only going from what you've written but trust me you're not the only person to have a horrific trip completely misinterpret it and then project that onto this reality and like oh therefore this must be meaningless and i know from experience and i actually went a step further and became a pessimistic nihilist and actually i was convinced that this reality is a satanic matrix used to basically harvest souls right like i went that whole other level not just meaningless i wish it was just meaningless i went to a very malevolent i went to a really dark place right which i could talk about forever so not only did i transcend that but i now I look back on it and it's like there is some truth to that i mean of course there is a lot of malevolence and and dark shit that happens in the society and even just existence itself, right? Pain is the price point to exist. Even the first noble truth of Buddhism, life is suffering. And this can seem very depressing at first, but once you understand what it really means, you will have more tools in your belt to help you cope with these harsh truths of, your, of reality. You know what I mean? So apart from just reading these books that I just recommended, I would also highly recommend taking it easy on yourself. Eat healthy get some vigorous exercise in because sometimes what you think may be an existential problem is actually just a physical problem and it's happened to me it happened to me yesterday where i was going to this really existential place and it's like hang on a sec i haven't actually eaten a proper meal in a while right and haven't exercised i haven't drunk i haven't drank water you know you've got to keep even hydration is a really important thing and the physical body and the human psyche is intricately connected so that's something to take on board is to really treat your physical health of utmost importance as well as your mental health which is who you're hanging out with what books are you reading what music are you listening to like so stay away from the depressive nihilist shit out there so maybe no rick and morty for a while <laughs> it's an awesome show but it's not exactly uh, a healthy thing to watch for your mind uh, at, at least when you're going through a really dark period especially with the whole meaningless thing and a good way to judge a philosophy is by judging the merit of the character of the person that's preaching that philosophy so look at rick sanchez he believes that this is all just some meaningless fucking joke i didn't choose to exist and he has this very depressive nihilistic outlook on life but look at him he's an alcoholic <laughs> he's suicidal he's a fucking asshole he's a great character don't get me wrong like he's hilarious rick and morty is one of my favorite shows but it's just important to look at the person who's preaching that philosophy. So start to look for people who are actually inspiring. Like what, how do people carry themselves? Is that somebody that you would like to be in a few decades? These are the questions that you gotta ask yourself and not just go on people's words. Uh, and this is the problem when people listen to Terence McKenna and the five grams in silent darkness and all that garbage. It's like, yeah, and look what happened to him. He had a horrific trip and he could never trip again. You know what I mean? I'm not knocking Terence McKenna. He has some very profound stuff. And I follow him uh, for many things, especially when it comes to uh, philosophy and stuff. But you have to always keep these things in mind. That's all I'm saying. And this includes myself. Just be very wary of what teachings you follow. And I feel you, man. Like, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so grateful that I didn't trip until I was 21. Fucks. High school was a nightmare enough and I didn't relate with people. I couldn't imagine getting to psychedelics and then going to school. 
So yeah, man, I guess, no, you didn't fuck up your brain. It's just going to take you a while to recover, but I would highly, highly recommend you staying the fuck away from psychedelics, right? At least for a very, very, very long time. No matter how much your friends convince you that it could be a good idea because you should always look at their life and how it's going. I remember this guy who reached out to me, did a, a Skype session because this guy really, really wanted to talk to me and I just made it very clear. It's like, all right, I'm not a professional, but okay, if you really want to talk to me, I can, I can give you some of my time. And he basically had a really horrific trip as well. And he was becoming sort of suicidal and very detached, detached from this reality. And his friend was saying, no, no, tell what you need to do. You need to smoke DMT and break through because that's what will give you this. And this, Oh, this makes me so angry, this this advice, because I had that too, right? After my burger trip, I had the, the fucked up advice of, no, you need to have a breakthrough trip. That will help you feel better. But then the person telling me this advice, he's neurotic, his life is completely chaotic. And uh, let me just say that he's not the best person to listen to advice from. But he knows a fuckload about psychedelics, right? This happens to a lot. I've heard many people give this advice of like, no, you need to have a bigger trip. That's just gonna make it worse. So don't do that. <laughs> try to stay grounded in your humanness and connected with Earth, you know? And I'm going to end this video very quick, but just some couple extra tips that I wanna throw in there is art, create, express your stuff. You know, I don't know if you're into drawing or music or whatever, but something that helped me is that I really got into my music because it's like, there's no words, but music says so much, man. It's like, oh, you're able to express yourself and it can be really cathartic, you know, to let those emotions out. So it's gonna be a constant process, but like music, drawing, uh, journaling, actually do a journaling, do um, Jordan Peterson's self-authoring program. It's really good. Uh, so anything that's gonna help you express what you're feeling and don't judge it, just let whatever comes out, comes out, all right? It's better for those words to be on paper than ricocheting inside your mind. Ching, 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 you're worthless, this, this is meaningless, life is shit, ah! You gotta <laughs> put it on paper, dude. Uh, and I'm not laughing because of this whole situation, it's just, I can relate. I'm, I'm laughing out of empathy here. So, that being said, I hope that whatever I said in this video, <laughs> I already forgot, is somewhat useful, but stay strong, dude. You've got this, just, <sighs> Give yourself the time to heal and try not to judge yourself. Please, I know it's very difficult and I, I know I'm saying this advice like it's so easy to do, but it's important to have the reminder. Don't judge yourself, man. Just be patient. Allow this to process and know that it will take a long time. But this is a beautiful time because now that your psyche is kind of falling apart, it's a beautiful opportunity to rebuild into a much better castle or whatever you, want, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, but this is a good opportunity to reprogram your mind with much more sustainable belief systems that are actually rooted in reality. So, that being said, good luck dude, you didn't fuck up your brain, you're all good. Um, let us know in the questions below if you have any questions. This goes to everybody by the way. And uh, yeah, let me know if you like these kind of videos, because um, I know that, like I stated before, the high production videos take a long freaking time. But if you do want to support this channel and help me create one these projects, you know, we could use all the help that we can get. So any help would be appreciated, whether it's a one-time donation or pledging on Patreon, you get some pretty cool perks over there anyway. But yeah, guys, I really do appreciate all the love and support. Like this wouldn't happen without you guys. And it's surreal that I even get to do this. But trust me, I've got some really cool stuff going on. And uh, yeah, the more support we have, the better content we can make, period. But that being said, guys, love you all. Have a good day, and I'll catch you in the next video. I can't punch the phone as I usually do because it will knock over, but yeah, peace out. <laughs>